This is the Fat Boy Invert 60 ball head. And a few months ago, I did a full review on the Fat Boy tripods and this ball head. And I went over all the super smart and user-friendly design features they built into their products. And at the time, I said I believe this was the best tripod and ball heads on the market. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out right there and you can decide for yourself. This weird looking contraption is the brand new Fat Boy Levitate ball head. And I think Fat Boy has outdone themselves. Let's check it out. Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount. So, you know, again, just like I said, you know, I, I did a review on these and I've been using these Fat Boy Invert 60 ball heads along with their tripods, which we're gonna go over. And by the way, this video, uh, you know, we're gonna go over the features of all these real quick and show you this brand new, uh, very interesting and, and really just, again, another, another smart design uh, an innovative design by Fat Boy that really does genuinely impress me. But we're gonna go over all the features and then we're actually gonna take these out on the range. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can win a, the new Levitate ball head with your tripod of choice. Uh, we're giving a whole set away for free. We'll talk about those details in just a minute. But you know, going back to this Invert 60, folks, I, you know, after trying this, I loved everything about it. I think it is genuinely the best ball head on the market when I tried it at the time. And that was after trying everything else in the market. Folks, we, we went through, uh, again, all the big names. You know, we were already carrying the bog tripods as kind of a budget tripod for people that are just getting into shooting. And those are great for what they are, but we wanted to carry kind of a higher end tripod that people that were much more serious when it came to either hunting or even recreational shooting and just wanted the best stability. And of course, for competition. But again, I thought this was was the best answer out there. And I'm not saying that it's not because I, I do think even now there's some situations where you might consider this uh, over the Levitate. But I am gonna show you some amazing features and what this thing can do both here as we talk about it right here at the bench, but also on the range. And I will go ahead and put it out right now that if you already own this ball head, I don't think that there is a immediate need to upgrade. If you want both, great. There are some advantages and disadvantages to both, and we're gonna talk about that. But I will say that when the guys over at Fat Boy sent me an email, uh, and actually I think it was a text message talking about they were coming out with a new ball head, I was a little concerned. Not really concerned, I guess, but um, you know, in my mind I was like, you know, why make people have that choice, right? Uh, what you guys have already is great, uh, but you know, those guys are hard chargers and they wanted to come out with something new. And I gotta be honest, once I got this in my hand and I got to test it out a little bit, I'm glad they did because there are definitely some scenarios or use cases where this is gonna outperform this already high performance ball head. I mean, it really comes down to that. And it's, it's a really, really cool design. But we're gonna go over some of these features on this, what this does, that this doesn't, and I will talk about some advantages that this setup has over this. So the basic design of this is we basically have a third or a half of a ball down here that basically your gun sits right on top. And this is really great because it definitely gives you a lower, uh, lower center of gravity. So you can see, Basically, this is how this sits on here. And normally, this is your standard ball head and this is your apex cap that goes onto the tripod itself or comes with the tripod itself. And this is how this threads on and you have this entire piece that sits down in your bowl, locks into place. This one is just like this. You take out that cap, you remove it completely and you set this down and this is basically sitting right on top of your uh, tripod to begin with. So I do think that there are some pretty significant stability advantages on this. So the way that this locks though, is this handle right here. It's a cam locking action. I don't know what they call it, but that's what I'm gonna call it. it has this cam lock action that basically, as you can see, all you're doing is pushing this forward and this locks into place. So that's how that locks. You loosen it by just pulling that. And it is a very smooth operating action. You know, when they first sent me pictures, and I think they even sent me a short video of how this works, I was concerned that, you know, when you're locking this into place, that that action, that movement would actually upset your sight picture. And it doesn't. This is extremely smooth. Uh, it's easy to do without upsetting that sight picture. And as a matter of fact, when we got on the range, I'm actually gonna video through the optics so you can see exactly what I'm seeing as I'm using this. So one cool feature of this right here on your locking handle down here at the bottom, we actually have magnetic storage for a hex key, right? So this is actually a four millimeter hex key. It is the same size that works 
on all of the different um, fasteners on the tripod itself. So that's actually nice to have right there. Now, how much tension you have on your ball head is completely adjustable. And the way that we adjust that is we just unlock our locking handle right there. And then you guys will see right there, there is a fastener right there. And all we do is we pull out that stored Allen wrench, and then we can tighten or loosen that and adjust that tension so that we can adjust exactly how much tension that we want on that. Now, just like all of their ball heads, all right, we actually have built-in adapters for Arca and Picatinny rails. Uh, and these rails will accept your standard Arca rails, just like this, and then also the Area 419 Arca lock rails, and there again, any sort of Picatinny rail. And I'll show you how that works. So first of all, if you're putting a Arca rail on there, we're just gonna put it in there. We adjust it and we throw this lever. Now, this right here, I can tell that's a little bit looser than I would want it. So to adjust my rail tension, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in on the lever as it's unlocked, all right? And then we have a nut over here. And all I'm going to do is obviously tighten that just a little bit and just throw, you know, again, a quarter of a turn at a time. And you'll see right there, folks, see how that sets down in there? Now I have done this before where I get it kind of halfway in between. So make sure that that nut is recessed all the way. And then as I put my rail in there again, or the gun in there, I want about that much tension. It's probably only about two or three pounds of resistance that I need to put onto that lever and it locks it in very tight. Three or four pounds of pressure to lock that locking lever. That's all you need. That will lock that gun in there extremely tight. Uh, now let's take a look at the 419 Arca lock rail. We have it right here. Um, let's see how close to spec it is for that. That's an MDT rail. Oh, that's actually perfect. All right, so again, these two brands seem to be pretty compatible with one another without having to make any sort of major adjustments on that. Now we'll take a look at the Picatinny rail section. And here we have our pick rail. And again, you can see down in the bottom is the, the pick rail adapter that's built in. So all we do is make sure that our clamp is unlocked. We go to tighten it and then we lock that down. We get good tension on there and that thing's not going anywhere. So it is nice to have a um, tripod system where you don't have to go and buy additional adapters so that you can use it on your pick rail guns or your Arca lock rail guns, so, or Arca rail guns. So it was really smart, a fat boy, to build that in. Most manufacturers don't, they should. All right, so before we get this mounted up in the tripod, I wanna talk a little bit about maybe some advantages or disadvantages between the Invert 60 and the Levitate. Um, I think they're fairly minor for the most part. I do think in 99% of shooting situations, this is a slightly better for uh, tracking, for target transition, for panning, um, and just keeping the gun, it's just a little bit more, st more stable. Again, going back to the fact that there again, we have a lower center of gravity. The other benefit that this has, when you're using a ball head like this, these do have a tendency, and that's why Fat Boy goes with this massive 60 millimeter ball head, which most of them are not that big. As you have this mounted, and you're trying to pan left or right, or you loosen this, there is a tendency because it's on this big sphere that it wants to tilt left or right. Um, this mitigates that tendency quite a bit, the way this is designed. For one, it's not sitting on the apex of the sphere, uh, but I will say, being that this is this big, massive 60 millimeter ball head, we have a lot more surface area there on top than some of the smaller ball heads. That's why you know a larger ball head um, is gonna work a little bit better and be a little bit more stable and a little smoother. So there's that, there's kind of an advantage that we have over that. Now, because typically we are using this apex plate um, and we have this attached and this is how this attaches down into the bowl of the tripod, because we, we're not using it that way and because we're, we have this locking handle at the bottom, we do lose our ballast hook down here. You may or may not decide that that's a big issue with you, and, but you need to know about it because you do lose your ballast hook. Uh, now, with that being said, I can hold this down. This does allow me to uh, keep a hand on my tripod and kind of pull it down from the center uh, to help stabilize it, which I do like, instead of just holding onto one leg. Um, so you can kind of create your own ballast, but there are some other options where you use like a, 
uh, tripod hammock, I'll show you that in a second, which is also useful for a lot of other things like holding gear, ammunition, your Kestrel or other devices like that. So the biggest difference between these two ball heads and, and the, the feature that I think would have the biggest impact on your decision is the fact that you get a lot more elevation angle out of the Invert 60. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's probably you know 60 degrees or so up and down, which is a lot. It's more than 99% of every shooter would ever need that. Cause look folks, I mean, I'm basically shooting at that angle. Um, you know, it's just, you're just not gonna use that much elevation angle or, or negative elevation angle, it's just not gonna happen. This is limited to 15 down and 15 up. So you got 30 degrees overall. Um, that may be a big deal if you're doing some high angle shooting. I would say 99% of people shooting never actually shoot 15 degrees. Now, if you're going hunting in the mountains, you're, you're hunting goats uh, or something like that, it could be a concern. Um, so just be aware of that. 15 degrees, it's a lot of elevation change, uh, 15 down and 15 up, around 30 total. Uh, but that is probably the biggest decision factor on this. Um, we do have another ball head for you hunters coming out that I'm gonna be doing a video on very soon. But basically it's a lighter, smaller version of this, the Invert, Invert 40, but I'm gonna do a full video on that pretty soon too. But with all that being said, folks, the smooth tracking and the ability to transition from target to target or track a target that you get with this, being that it is has such a, it's you know, the gun is basically resting right on top of this. Uh, and I guess I could talk about it all day, but we'll actually demonstrate it. So let's pull this out. Let's get a gun up there and I'll, I'll talk about some of the features once you have the rifle uh, attached to it. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, folks, so here we have the Invert 60. And one of the features that I love about this ball head is the fact that I can go from, okay, this is completely tight. Like I can't, like I'm sure I could really yank on this thing and move it, but that is as tight as you ever need it. And then to get it loose enough, more than loose enough to move this and to move onto another target uh, or to glass an area or whatever else, it's literally like that much. All right, now I can move this left and right. And I like that I can control the tension very precisely, right? It's just a little bit, it goes from completely tight to completely loose, more or less, or at least more than loose enough. And I like keeping some tension on this so that it works like a fluid head. If you ever used any, uh, a camera tripod or camera ball head, there's a fluid heads that create tension so that your pans or your tilts are nice and smooth. And that's what this does. So I keep tension on this and now I can move this and I can control that tension just by very small, minute movements. With that being said, especially when you're trying to go fast, it's easy to throw too much and now I have a, a wobbly gun, right? And of course you can tighten it back up, it's not a big deal. But there again, you, you, you have to control the tension on this. Uh, I think this does this better than just about any other ball head I've ever used prior to the Levitate on this particular feature. You know, there's lots of, uh, you know, like the pistol grip ball heads. If you ever use those where like as soon as you grab that pistol grip, you know, your gun just flops around. But I also want to show you what I was talking about too. Being that we are on the top of a, a sphere, there is a tendency when you loosen this, that gun does want to kind of fall off the edges of that sphere. That's just the, kind of the nature of it. But I think when it comes to ball head designs, this particular type of design, this inverted ball, one of the best out there by far. And this is still going to be as good as you pretty much ever need. So again, if you already have this or if you really want a ballast hook, I think this is the best answer. Or if you really need some extreme, you guys can see how extreme that elevation changes are. Um, if you really need that, if you're you know <coughs> hunting billy goats in Alaska on top of mountain tops up and down, you may want that. But I think you know most people. You may think you're going to use that, but again, 99.9% .9 of the population will never need that. But I, I wanna make sure that you're aware of those differences so you're informed and you can make the best decision for you. All right, so now let's grab the Levitate and I'll show you some differences in those design features for that. With the Levitate, all we're gonna do is we push that down into the bowl. You'll end up positioning this where you want it. And then I'm just gonna tighten this down just like that. But just like the Invert 60, uh, once you have this loose, you do have to hit the, the release to actually take this out of the bowl. So if you accidentally knock this loose, you know, this thing ain't gonna just go falling out on you. 
which is a nice feature if you're hunting. You know, maybe you threw this up real quick because you saw a coyote or a pig or deer, or whatever you got going on, and then you decide that you're gonna move locations, you take your gun out, and this is loose. Maybe you didn't tighten that all the way, and so that way when you pick this up and go to move it without hitting the release button, you know, your uh, ball head isn't gonna fall out of the tripod. So that is nice, because you know how it is. You'll end up walking half a mile through brush and woods and realize your ball head's missing. Um, and they have to go look for it. But that release button, that prevents that from happening. Just some redundancy to make sure your gear is secured because we are all stupid and Fat Boy knows that. So they try to make all their gear stupid proof, which I appreciate. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to move, I'm gonna actually lock this under my Arca rail with it like in almost a completely forward, this is not, normally I would probably put this on the Arca rail about right there, kind of center the gun a little bit, right? And because folks, the last time I was messing with this, I adjusted this to the pick rail. This isn't as tight as I would want it. Like I, there's no tension on that throw lever. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and adjust it. And the way I do is set the gun right there. I put it underneath my arm, I trap it, and then I'm just pushing in on the lever side. It exposes that nut. And now I'm gonna turn it about a half a rotation, making sure that it sinks down in there. Boom. All right, that feels right. That feels good right there. Now. When I lock this, I can still move this around a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expose that nut underneath there. There again, right from our handle, we have that Allen, and I'm going to adjust this on the fly. All right, that's about right. Oh yeah, that thing is freaking solid, folks. So what I like about this, I, have, I can hold it right here. I can add my own ballast just by holding this down. I'm holding it in the center and pulling straight down. The other thing that I can do is actually manipulate that locking handle from just right here. I can use my thumb to push on that or I can grab it with my fingers, unlock it, or I can lock it with my thumb. And folks, this camming action, this locking action is super smooth. This was my biggest concern with this design is I thought it was gonna like snap into place and upset your sight picture. Folks, it doesn't, it is super smooth. I was, I doubted Fat Boy on this design. And guys, I'm sorry. I was wrong, you were right, you did it right. It looks, it feels good, it locks super smooth. So that's that, but folks, this is what I like about this. Even when this is loose, because it already has tension on it, it just is super smooth when we're panning left and right. It has much less of a tendency to want to tilt. I actually have to like, it takes some effort to tilt on this just because it's at the bottom of that ball as opposed to the top where it's kind of wanting to, so, we're sitting this gun right on top of the apex, so it has a much lower center of gravity, and everything about this is just smooth. And there again, we still have significant levels of elevation. Just, you know, raising this up 15 degrees up or down, 99% of you have never shot at a level of 15 degrees. Some of you have, and if you require that, this ball head isn't for you. So I just wanna be clear on that. But I will tell you, for tracking targets, transitioning targets, Man, this thing is the cat's meow. I really, really love how smooth this is, how balanced it feels. Oh, and what I wanted to demonstrate to you was how strong this locking action is. And even though that there's such little tension that's required to lock this, it doesn't feel significant enough. Folks, how strong that is, is just remarkable. And this is a test I've already done. So right now I have the gun all the way forward on a front end heavy gun to begin with. We have a 26 inch M24 contour barrel, a nine inch suppressor. We got most of the weight of this optic going forward. There's very little weight back here. This is all skeletonized, not much weight. So very front end heavy as it is, but wait, there's more. Let's add to that. I'm gonna take our AccuTac bipods. All right, we're gonna extend those all the way out. Put this up here on the spigot mount. So that's as forward as possible. And we got a heavy fill shooting bag right there. I was trying to grab one of my schmediums, but they're out in the trailer. I want to get this right now. I'm lazy, folks. All right, so right there, a lot of weight on that thing. Now let's lock that into place. There again, folks. It takes another 10 pounds of pressure. Ooh, I am curious. Let's lock that into place right there. <sighs> folks, this is some T-stand bags. This is probably... I don't know, it's gotta be eight pounds. Look, oh my gosh. Folks, that's unbelievable. Again, that's eight or nine pounds on the very end. 
Folks, look at this. This is eight or nine pounds of sand on the very end of that thing. Locked into place. Plus we got a heavy bull barrel, plus a nine inch suppressor. Plus we have our bipods, heavier set of bipods extended all the way out, adding leverage to the end. And that thing locks into place. So the locking mechanism, smooth, unbelievably strong. Uh, I think probably the best design on the market. But the trade-off is, being that you're getting your center of gravity much lower, you are giving up some of that extreme elevation. But even when you unlock this thing, there's still tension on it, but it's not hard, it's not, it doesn't take effort, but it makes every movement very controlled, very precise. So I think for most applications, and if you're okay with giving up those extreme elevation ranges, this head is the way to go. I mean, it's just, it's super, it's just, it's just nice. It's just nice, very controlled, very nice overall. And it's just, I, I don't know how they designed this piece down here to be, to lock so smooth without any sort of jarring effect whatsoever, but they did a good job of doing that. It's dampened. That's the word I've been trying to look for. Every movement you have is dampened, all right? It's controlled and it's, it's just, it's nice, it's nice. So I guess we can sit here and talk about that and I can demonstrate in the studio, but why don't we take this to the range and have a little more fun with it there? So let's go out there. I'm actually gonna attach a camera on the back of my optic so you can see how this looks as we're you know panning through the optic. So enough talking, let's get out of the studio. Let's go to the range, a lot more fun anyhow. So I'll see you there in a second. Oh folks, I almost forgot. So before we go to the range, real quick, I would like to send one of you a free tripod and the brand new Levitate ball head. Uh, I would highly suggest the two section Elevate. That happens to be my favorite, but you're welcome to choose the standard three section or the two section. And there's nothing standard about them. I shouldn't say standard, but all you gotta do to win, like, subscribe, throw a comment down below on either Rumble or YouTube. If you do, you get one additional chance if you go over to Rumble. If you're watching this on YouTube, go to Rumble. If you're watching it on Rumble, go over to YouTube. Gives you two chances to win. Also, if you would like additional chances to win, all you gotta do is share this video on Facebook and Twitter and make sure you tag Paramount Tactical Solutions and Fat Boy in each of those posts and that will get you an additional and as a matter of fact you can do that once a week i will go through and i will check those and i will make sure that you're following all the rules and all that good stuff but soon as this video hits 10,000 views we're going to do a drawing and we're going to do it live right here on the show we're going to have the owners of fat boy both casey and connor on with us and we're going to give away the tripod of your choice and one of these levitates so make sure you like subscribe throw a comment down below and make sure you continue to oh every wednesday at 7 p.m eastern time uh, we have our Dangerous Liberty podcast. It is live stream so that you can join in and you can contribute. We talk about guns, gear, training, politics. So make sure you're joining us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you haven't already, make sure you also like and subscribe on our other sites. But I am really excited about this giveaway. But if you're looking to purchase one, maybe you're watching this after the giveaway is already done, just go to ParamountTactical.com. Uh, we are an official Fat Boy dealer and the only gear that we carry are items that we've personally tested and we believe represent the best. So, you know, we make the gear mistakes so that you don't have to. But anyways, let's get over to the range. All right, folks, so we're out here at the range at our training facility here at Summit Point, and I have an apology to make. Uh, kind of a technical snafu. I've been filming this entire video in 24 frames per second, and I don't wanna get into a bunch of videography nerd stuff, uh, but basically this trigger cam needs to be, it can only film at a minimum of 30 frames per second, and really I need to film in 60 frames per second. To, uh, if I was to drop that footage into the timeline of this entire video, it would look herky-jerky and it would completely uh, be counterproductive as to what I'm trying to illustrate and demonstrate. So. What I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna, we're gonna turn this into a two-parter. Um, I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna film the, the rest of this video in 60 frames, create another video. I will post it directly, basically at the same time. Um, so anyways, I apologize for that. I apologize for any inconvenience, but uh, definitely wanna check this out. I'm gonna be comparing the BOG uh, as well as the Invert 60 and the Levitate. Uh, I wanna show you those many differences in practical use and, and I'll try to keep it as short as possible, but uh, I definitely want you to be able to see it through the actual optics. So that's why I'm gonna use this device to film it. So anyways, click that link right there. It'll take you right there. I apologize about any inconvenience. Uh, I'll try to become a better videographer. I'm still working on that. But anyways, until next time, stay armed, stay ready, and we'll see you over at the other video.